This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com slash psychytruth. I have tons of awesome videos already ready for you. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. Hi, it's Julia. Welcome back to my video. This is number three in my 30-day course, Yoga for Weight Loss. So in this video, we are really going to amp up your flow by understanding what does it mean to flow breath with movement. You are going to get tremendous benefits of cardio, increasing your lean muscle mass, and understanding how to really dive into brain training, which is essential if you're going to stick with any positive habit in your life. Sometimes we don't feel motivated and honestly, we sabotage ourselves a little bit. But when we can find things like vinyasa flow, breath with movement, we start to get into this pattern where we're riding a wave of just pure enjoyment. And when we're done, our body's flooded with happy hormones and we start to crave our exercise. So what is this breath? Come to a seat and I'll show you. All right, so here in a seat, you can be crisscross yoga sauce or you can be in a kneeling position. If kneeling is a little bit tender on your ankles, grab a pillow and stick it underneath your seat. I'm upright so you can really take a look at right here where the diaphragm is in the body because we're going to be utilizing not just breathing up into the chest, but really allowing our breath to come into our abdomen. All right, so on your breath in, take it in through your nose. On your breath out, send it out your mouth. <sighs> Imagine that you're trying to fog up a mirror in front of you. Breathe in through your nose. Open mouth, exhale, try to fog up the mirror. <sighs> Great. Now, this time, seal your lips. Inhale through your nose, but with your lips sealed, you will exhale through the nose but still try to fog up the mirror. So that's gonna keep it pretty spacious in the back of your mouth, as well as start to just so slightly narrow your airway in your throat so that the breath comes in and out in a smooth and steady stream. It sounds like this. Again. Great. So that is Ujjayi Pranayama. Ujjayi means victorious and Pranayama means breath control. So victorious breathing. What does that mean? It means this is the breath that is going to carry you through your flow so that you feel two things. You feel energized, but you also feel calm. And it's really interesting because yoga is one of the only physical activities you can do for yourself where you're going to feel both of those things. It's our moving meditation. So when you can find an activity that you're moving and meditating at the same time, you're training your brain to really crave whatever movement it is that you're doing. So let's do that Ujjayi breath one more time. Great. Let's add the arms. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, hands to heart. Two more times. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, hands to heart. Last time, reach it up. Exhale, hands to heart. So once you unlock this power of moving meditation as a tool to train your brain, you might start to notice that you're taking this into the way you walk, into the way you run, into maybe swimming. You're going to start to find moving meditation in almost anything that you do because we're linking our body and our brain together. Let's come to tabletop. So you come to tabletop, stack your shoulders over your wrists, your hips over your knees. And this tabletop is the foundation for a lot of the core work that we're going to bring in. As we go through our flow today, we're going to amp up our flow by linking our breath with our movement. And we're also starting to develop deeper core strength, building lean muscle mass, which is essential for changing our body composition. Draw the low belly in, broaden the collarbones, and if your head's slumping down, that's probably because maybe you drive a lot or you work at a computer at a desk, lift the back of your skull up. 
extend your right arm forward, reach your left leg back, come to balance. You might notice that you're tipping to one side or the other, draw into the midline, hug into your center to find balance. This is essential as we start to turn up the volume on our flow in this video and through the rest of our 30 days. Take another breath in. On your exhale, release your hand and your knee down. Switch to the other side. Your left arm's going to go forward. Your right toes reach back. Get really long through your center. With your shin and your hand that are on the ground, press down. Draw the low belly in and begin to hug into the midline. Ignite even the back line of your leg and your glute to help ignite and stabilize your extended leg. One more breath in. Great, on your exhale, hand and knee down. Tuck your toes and we're gonna push back to downward facing dog. Lift your hips up and back. If you need to pedal out your legs a little bit here, do so. Once you feel stable, root into all four corners of your palms, the base knuckles of each of your five fingers and your finger pads. It's like you're palming the ground. Then wrap your elbows in towards your ears and feel your chest move back and your neck get long. I like to think about being able to keep the space of an orange between my ear and the top of my arms pretty much all the time so that my neck doesn't feel tight or cramped like this, but instead I'm spacious and long. Good. On your next breath in, gaze to your hands. On your breath out, step to ragdoll, revisiting this pose from previous videos, so you may know it. Soften your knees, drape your belly down, drop your head, grab for opposite elbows. Let your neck relax. Continue to breathe. Remember the ujjayi, and if any time you notice, ooh, I forgot, come right back. So that helps us build presence of mind or mindfulness, which is essential to any weight loss program. Being really cognizant of what you're doing, what you're doing in your body, what you're feeding yourself, what you're thinking about, all of these things as we start to harness control, begin to influence and align us for success. One more breath in, release your fingertips, breath out. Rise all the way up to stand and take your hands to your heart. Great, so our flow today is going to be focusing on sun salutations. Sun salutations are a great way to start your day. They utilize your entire body from toe tip to fingertip. So you're increasing circulation, you're amping up the cardiovascular benefit of your yoga, and you're starting to find that breath with movement, which is training your brain to be energized and calm, which is sort of, I don't know, the prize or the zone of where we want to be in our physical activity. So let's start at the top of the mat, bring your hands to your heart. Great. On your inhale, reach up. On your exhale, fold forward. Take your hands to your shin bones. Halfway lift, flatten your back, and draw your shoulder blades away from your ears. Good. On your next exhale, plant your hands. Step back to a high plank. So great form in high plank is essential. If you notice that you are hiking your butt up or you're sagging it really low, drop down to your knees. If you're right here in high plank, Take your neck nice and long and lift your ears up in line with your upper back. Push into the ground, but also hug your belly in. And then notice, are you soft in your legs or are you engaged? Press your heels back and the crown of your head forward. Take a breath in and on your exhale, hinge forward and lower all the way down to your belly. If that's a new transition for you, you can always drop your knees first. When you get to the ground, loop your shoulder heads back and press down through your feet. Lift your chest and draw the heels of your hands a little farther back. So this is a baby cobra, and baby cobra is amazing for strengthening your back. When we think about one of the major benefits of yoga, it's back pain. And back pain is actually one of the major reasons why people stop going to the gym and they quit working out, because their back hurts. But the truth is you gotta keep moving to make your back not hurt 
Take one more breath in. Lower your chest down. Press to your tabletop. You've been here before. And shift back to downward facing dog. So it's really important to understand what is pain and what is uncomfortable. Some of these things are going to be uncomfortable. But if you can breathe through them, if you can take that victorious breath and get through your practice, then you're probably dealing with discomfort and not pain. That's another reason why our breath is so important. It's a huge indicator of how we're doing. Let's take Sun A a few more times. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, journey to the top of your mat. Halfway, lift your chest, breathe in. Forward fold, breathe out, the breath is important. Inhale, stand up, reach up. Exhale, fold forward, bow. Hands to your shins, halfway lift. Exhale, plank pose, lower to your belly. Untuck your toes, cobra pose. Inhale, lift. Exhale, chest down. Tabletop, press up. Tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Great. So in the next round of Sun A, we're going to up the intensity by taking out that tabletop. You're simply going to press up from Cobra to downward facing dog, and you're going to do great. I'll guide you through it. So we'll take the next round of Sun A, just pressing straight back instead of pausing in tabletop. It'll take a little time to get used to it, but you're going to do great. On your next inhale, look forward. On your exhale, step to the top of your mat. Halfway lift your chest, breathe in big. Forward fold, breathe out. Stand all the way up, reach up. Forward fold, all the way back out. Remember your breath. Halfway lift your chest, inhale. Exhale to plank and lower down to your belly. Cobra pose, inhale, lift your chest. And straight back to down dog, tuck your toes, press up and back. Breathe in, breathe out. We're gonna take two more Sun A's. Continue to lift the energy level in your body. Look to your hands, step to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, breathe in. Forward fold, breathe out. Stand all the way up, big inhale. Forward fold, all the way back down. Halfway lift, inhale. High plank, exhale and lower to your belly. Cobra pose, lift. Downward facing dog, up and back. Full breath in, full breath out. One more round. Look to your hands. Travel to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, you're getting warm. Forward fold, let your head drop. Inhale, stand all the way up, big reach. Forward fold, all the way back down. Halfway lift, heart moves forward. Exhale to plank and lower to your belly. Take a cobra pose, lift your heart. Downward facing dog, press up and back. This time we'll take three breaths. Every exhale, exhale out your open mouth. So in through your nose, open mouth exhale. Two more times. In through your nose. Open mouth, exhale. Last time. In through your nose. Open mouth, exhale. Now return to ujjayi breath. Seal your lips. In through your nose. Keep your lips sealed. Out through your nose. Hold downward facing dog for a few more moments. Another tremendous benefit of yoga is we increase bone density. We do this because we are doing body weight bearing exercises. So strong bones, lean muscle mass, this is all essential when we want to build a strong and fit body. You're almost there, let your arms warm up. One more, breath in. And on your exhale, come down to your knees. You can sit back on your ankles and just take a moment to relax. Maybe even close your eyes. Feel movement underneath your skin. So in yoga, we talk a lot about prana. Prana is 
the vital life energy. And in yoga, we say it rides the wind of your breath. So if you can have a strong command of your breath, then you can start to have a strong command of your energy. And you can begin to put your energy where you want it to go. So let's just take a couple more seconds noticing all of the activity that's going on right underneath your skin. Great job. So let's come down to our backs. Kick your legs out in front of you. Roll down slowly, feel your core engage on the way down. Take a moment to just be on the ground. You might still, still feel your, your heart rate a little bit elevated and this victorious breathing, this in and out through the nose with just a small bit of constriction in the throat creates a really smooth and deliberate air passage so that it'll slow down the nervous system and come back to equilibrium. Great. Let's balance out all of the cobra and the rising up from forward fold, which is essentially a spinal extension or back bending with a twist. So draw your hips over to the left, your knees to the right, open up your arms, come into this supine twist. So we talked a little bit about building lean muscle mass and increasing bone density because we're doing a body weight bearing activity. That's a lot of kind of feeling sciencey terms. What does that mean? Like how does that actually apply? Well, basically when you have more lean muscle mass, your body's ability to utilize fuel is more efficient. And when you have denser bones, that means you are less likely to break or injure your bones in an activity. So when we think about building a fit body for the rest of our life, lean muscle mass and bone density are way more important than a number on a scale. We want to have lean muscle. We want to have dense, supportive, and strong bones. Unfortunately, we sometimes get a little bit obsessed about that scale number. So I hope you're starting to realize through the course of this program, there's a lot of different metrics that you can use for fitness. Come back to the center, scoot your hips over to the right, drop your knees to the left, Just take your supine twist the other direction. It's important not to tug or pull. We're allowing our joints to shift and open and find better patterns over time. So you never have to tug on your body. Continue your breath. When it comes to brain training, we want to be able to find that balance of flow. When we're in our flow state, our brain begins to reward us for our activity. And it rewards us by releasing chemicals that basically make us feel happy. And so we create a positive feedback loop. We say, oh, I like that thing. I want more of that thing. I crave that thing. Why not crave feeling great in your body? Going through this program, you are setting up a new habit to actually enjoy being in your own skin. Come back through the center. Let's just take a really supported Shavasana shape. So feet wide, knees knock together, and relax your arms to your side. Feel your low back get a little longer and let the base of your skull, the back of your head, your arms, your jaw all get soft. None of this has to be tense. Continue to breathe. And as you breathe, envision that every time you inhale, you are inhaling gratitude. Gratitude for the ways that your body moves for you. And every time you exhale, your exhales can be open mouth exhales from here on out. You're just exhaling out love and peace and the intentions that you want to bring into your day. So 
So it doesn't matter if you're watching this video first thing in the morning or the last thing before you go to bed. We know that the brain can decide to make a change at any point. So you don't have to wait until tomorrow to have a great day. You can decide to have a great day right now. Really good. Draw your knees to your chest. Take a moment and rock side to side, smooth out the back. Roll to your side. Press yourself up to a seat. You can sit back on your heels or you can take a crisscross yoga sauce and bring your hands to your heart. As you bring your hands to your heart, this gesture of gratitude being really grateful for all of the effort that you put in to your yoga practice today. I am so glad that you decided to take this 30 day journey. I hope you're enjoying it. It feels good to enjoy being in our own skin. As you continue to go through this 30 day program, I know that you're gonna to start to feel your best and you're going to start to see changes in your body. So, Make sure that you know that this is just as much about training your mind to feel really good as it is to change anything about your physical body. Bring your thumb knuckles up to your mind's eye. The divine light in me honors and salutes the divine light in you. Until next time, namaste. Today's bonus tip is all about goal setting. So throughout this program, you're definitely gonna notice weight loss. You're going to notice that your body is going to change. You'll increase your energy. You're definitely gonna learn a ton of new yoga postures. But whenever I take on a client or I have someone who comes to me and says, I have this physical goal, I often tell them that the number on the scale is not always the best measure of our success when we take on new exercise programs or we take on new dietary programs. So how do we measure our success? Well, when it comes to the recipe for weight loss, and really I hope you're hearing the recipe for optimal living because it's not all about the scale. We really have to look at other factors, definitely our exercise, but also what are we putting in our body to fuel us? And are we looking at reducing our stress levels and getting enough sleep? So if we're going to set goals like, I want to average seven hours of sleep per night, and maybe right now you're only getting like four, well then how are you going to do that? Or maybe you're looking to increase the nutrient content of your diet. You're kind of on the potato chip diet right now and you're looking to add more veggies. Well, how are you specifically going to get there? So when we set these goals for ourselves, it's helpful to make them SMART goals. The acronym SMART, S-M-A-R-T. This can be a helpful tool in setting goals that are realistic and achievable. So the S is for specific, getting down and dirty with, you, with what you really want to do. So if it's something like eating more vegetables, you might say that, eating more vegetables. Or you could get even more specific and say, eating a salad. Or perhaps it's something on the exercise end. Instead of just saying exercise, get specific. Yoga classes, HIIT training, the online videos that I'm watching. M is for measurable. So measurable means that you need to be able to look back over time and notice the accumulation of your goal. So if it is a weight loss goal, you might say something like 10 pounds, but let's broaden that. What if it's a dietary goal? Then you wanna say maybe eating healthy for 30 days in a row, or perhaps it's a water goal. Mm, four large glasses of water per day. Right, so something that you can measure. The A in SMART goals is for achievable. It doesn't help us when we set out goals that we know we can't accomplish. Then we're basically sabotaging ourselves before we even get started. So it's important that you lay out goals that you can actually achieve. So it doesn't make much sense to say, mm, I'm going to eat a salad for every single meal for 30 days. No, that's not gonna happen. So instead, when you look at your goals, make sure that you're setting something that is achievable. The R is for relevant. You wouldn't set a goal for yourself that you didn't care about. 
So make sure that you're setting a goal that has some sort of relevance to you in your life. So if you don't like, let's say, playing basketball, you wouldn't make a smart goal about joining a new sports league if that's just not your thing. Make sure that your goal is relevant to your life, your passions, and your joy. And the last thing, and I think this might be the most important thing, is time-based. Time-based means that you are giving yourself a set period of time that you're committing to accomplish this goal. Time-based means that you're committing to also being accountable with yourself as you move through the process of achieving a goal. Can your time fluctuate? Absolutely. This is your goal, so you can change it as you need to. But if you never put a time on it, if there's no time limit, if this is something that potentially could just last forever, you probably won't feel very motivated to actually finish the work. So if it's something like this 30-day challenge, make sure you commit to it. This is 30 days. Put it in your phone, put a post-it note on your refrigerator, write your SMART goals down and have them visible to you so that you know what it is that you are looking to achieve. So your homework for today is to set a SMART goal. And I encourage you to set a goal outside of exercise because we've got that covered. We're doing this challenge together. Let's look at those other aspects of health. Can you set a SMART goal for your diet? Maybe it's something like eat two extra servings of vegetable every day for the next 30 days. Or it could be something about your sleep habits. It could be go to bed 15 to 30 minutes earlier during the week for the next 30 days. So in each of those examples, they were pretty specific, they were definitely achievable, and they had a time base. And because they're goals for you, you know that they're going to be relevant for your life. A lot of people have stress-related goals for themselves. Maybe your stress-related goal is simply take five minutes every single morning to sit down and breathe diaphragmatically, breathe deeply, and set a timer on my phone while I do it for the next 30 days. So I hope that gave you some good ideas for goals you can set for yourself. Jot one down, something that's really meaningful to you, and make sure that you have that visible, a visible reminder every single day so that you are committed to meeting that goal. I'm so excited to be doing this challenge with you. I'm with you moment by moment, and I cannot wait to go through the rest of this 30 days right there with you. You can stream more full programs and classes right now on Amazon. Click the link below to find Julia Marie Yoga on Prime Video or on the Amazon Wellness Plus channel. Introducing Yoga Plus, offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus. Download now for free.